presents University of Maine College Football. Today, the University of Maine Jordan's Meat Fall Classic brought to you by Jordan's Meats, celebrating six decades of leadership. And by your New England Ford dealers. Number one knows New Englanders better. Coca-Cola, catch the way, Coke. By the Portland Press Herald, Evening Express, and the Maine Sunday Telegram, bringing you every play, every day. Bonanza of Maine, Levinsky, where we've lowered our prices before Christmas. And by the Maine Dodge dealers, it's gotta be a Dodge. Live from Fitzpatrick Stadium in Portland, Maine, this is the big Yankee Conference matchup between the University of Maine Black Bears and the University of New Hampshire Wildcats. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bruce Glacier. Joining me in the broadcast booth will be my running mate, Billy Green. Bill, a lot of interesting matchups in this game. Indeed, and the biggest one at quarterback where Mike Buck of the Maine Black Bears and Bob Jean of the New Hampshire Wildcats will be throwing the ball. Mike Buck dynamic individual can throw the ball along which has given Maine the big play dimension that they've lacked for a long long time Buck is incredible especially when he's scrambling he can really make things happen Bobby Jean he had a wrap last year he threw for only 40 percent completions this year he leads the conference in that statistic with 59 percent completions he's got two guys that he can throw it to and Chris Braun and Curtis Olds he's got actually a bunch of people he can throw it to the key today may not be which is the best quarterback, but which line is best able to protect their quarterback. A very good point, and joining me also in the booth will be new center's Dale Duff. Dale, an interesting matchup in the trenches. Absolutely. First of all, New Hampshire has the best defense in the conference by far, and one of the keys is Paul Boulay, number 98. Outstanding, 6'1", 265 pounds. The Pro Scouts are looking at him, and he's going to try to rush Buck, try to get him off guard a little bit, as is will all the defensive line players. They've got to try to stop him. And Dave Ingalls is a big key for the main attack. Number 73, he's a guard, big guy, 6'4", 270 pounds. The scouts are looking at him, too. So can they give him enough protection? Buck's only been sacked three times all year. Maine may have the best offensive line in the conference. Obviously, New Hampshire's got the best defensive line in the conference. Okay, Dale, so there are the matchups, and there are the teams. Maine and New Hampshire. We'll be back with the opening kickoff right after this. People. The opening kickoff, Eric Facey boots it in. It's going to be picked up by Sterling at the two-yard line. For Maine, he's up to the 15. He gets to the outside to the 20. He's got some running room. To the 25, to the 30, 35. And he's down at the 40 to about the 43-yard line. Interesting thing happened there. The ball wasn't caught in the air and because he picked it up on a hop. I think the pursuit was... Uh, off timing there and he was able to turn the corner turn it upfield we got a man down on the field for the University of New Hampshire the main will go to the offense against the wind here at Fitzpatrick Stadium they'll have the ball at the they spot it now at the 36 yard line good field position to start the ball game will set the main offense it'll be quarterback Mike Buck number 16 the tailback will be number 27, Jimmy Fox. Fullback, number 45, Ray Wood. Flanker will be number 19, Jeff Knox. And the split end, number one, Sergio Hebra. The offensive line, left tackle, 74, Chuck Casmer. Left guard, 65, Ron Noble. At center, Seth Capel, number 60. The right guard will be number 73, Dave Ingalls, who has attracted a lot of attention as a pro scouts here today from the Indianapolis Colts and New York Giants. Ingalls is one of the ball players that they're looking at. The right tackle will be Tommy Rogers, number 66, 6'3", 255-pound sophomore. The tight end, number 85, Tony Lanza. Number 75, Frank McGuire, 6'3", 250-pound sophomore, is the man down on the field for the University of New Hampshire. He is their starting right guard. And while we've got a moment, Bill, I also wanted to mention on Sterling as far as the kickoff goes and that great field position that Maine will start with. Sterling only started returning the kickoffs about a couple of three weeks ago. Tim Murphy wanted to get a little bit better field position, and he thought that Sterling was the man to do it. And he's got that great athletic skill and great speed, and uh, he's got them in great field position. That's quarterback Bobby Mitchell down for New Hampshire. He's up and walking off the field as we take another look at the kickoff. A little bit of a stumble on the kick, and the ball lands on the ground. 
sometimes when it's picked up like that, uh, it throws the people off whack, and you can many times can get a great run off it, and that's what they did. We're back to live action. The first play from scrimmage for the Black Bears at the 36, and Buck's going to go up top. Puts it out to the right side to pull back Ray Wood. Wood gets over the 40, over the 45, up to the 50-yard line. Uh, brought down there by cornerback Ryan Jones. And it's a nice, safe call to start out with, I think, for Tim Murphy's crew. And that's what he wants to do, try to play it a little bit safe, I think, early on, try to play ball control. And uh, that's a nice way to start. So it's first and 10 for the Black Bears. We'll spot it at their own 48-yard line. Debra splits wide to the left. Lands a tight end, comes tight to the left side. And off second man through his box, and he's piled up. There's a loose ball, a fumble. And New Hampshire has recovered. Well, those turnovers that have plagued Maine all season long happens on the second play from scrimmage. A loose ball, New Hampshire takes over at their own 48-yard line. And Jimmy Fox has had a tendency to, to do that earlier in the season. He had some shoulder problems early on and just wasn't able to hang on the ball. There you see it in the middle. That's that great New Hampshire defense. They really stick it to him. They're big up front, New Hampshire. Bobby Jean leads him out. He splits Curtis Holes to the right side. Number seven, he's a split end. First and 10 for New Hampshire at their own 48-yard line. Back to the I formation. Gene's going to go up top. He fires down the middle. He's got a man. He drops it. Well, Rod Spittle, the tight end, had the ball about the 32-yard line, but he started turning before he caught it and dropped it. So it goes in complete second and ten. Spittle pretty much an underrated receiver, according to the University of New Hampshire coaching staff. He started slowly, but he's had a couple of big games. He's a tight end, and they think that there's some great things lay ahead for him. Here's Gene throwing over the, the linebacking core, which has dropped uh, in front of the zone. There's going to be a space 16, 18 yards deep. They had it. Spittle dropped the ball. Second and 10 from their 48. Todd Romanek, the running back, in place of Ford. And it's a handoff to Romanek, left side. He's over 50, 45, 40, still on his feet. Inside the 35-yard line of Maine, down to close to the 30. Kind of a numbers game on the left corner that time. The New Hampshire Wildcat team lined up in a pro set with the additional people to the strong side of the, the field. And they give it to Urbanic because they've got an even matchup in terms of blocking over there and just let his athletic ability take, take over. Look at the corner they established. Urbanic, a tough man to catch in the open field. Maine finally hog ties him. And in one play, I think they proved that they've got more than just Norm Ford in the backfield. Indeed. First and 10 at the Maine 31. In motion is Chris Braun. Gene rolls to his right. He wants the throw. In the middle to Spittle at the 20. Still on his feet down about the 18-yard line. Up to make the tackle for Maine, Rob Sterling, along with linebacker Nick Penna. And notice Gene rolled out of that pocket a little bit, and uh, Maine defense is going to have their work cut out for him. Uh, New Hampshire's so good, so balanced, and uh, Maine's defense is going to have a tough time, and uh, it's a nice controlled drive so far for him. They see Spittle's numbers, and that's a good catch for him. It gets his confidence right back. First and 10 at the main 18. New Hampshire on the drive. Split far to the left side is Old. Drawn to the right side. Backs going the I formation. The deep back is Urbanic. And it's Urbanic on the left side. He's hit, but still on his feet. Gets down to about the 15. It's a loose ball. Tell you, Pennock in there on the hit. And New Hampshire comes up with it. New Hampshire overshifts their backs. You'll notice that they line up on the strong or wide side of the field. That time they were lined up behind the left offensive guard. And one thing that New Hampshire will do when they're going to run the ball, they're going to try to power the ball. They're not going to hide people. They're going to put their best people pretty much in the direction that they're going, as they did there. Main stopped them. No gain, second and 10 from the 18-yard line. Bandit goes to the left side. The lone running back now is Matt Banbury, the fullback. It's a pitch to Banbury. Fake pitch. Gene rolls to his left. He's looking for holes. He can't find anyone. He's going to run it, and he's going to be knocked out of bounds close to the 16-yard line, the far side of the field. That play, it was a fake toss. They fake tossing it to their tailback, and that's a big play for New Hampshire, that toss play. Maine stayed at home and read it pretty well. Bob Jean on the run is not as effective as Bob Jean standing in a pocket. Uh, he did a decent job with it there, but it could have come out a loss because Maine defended that play pretty well. 
So it's third and long at the 16-yard line, third and about eight. Again, Braun to the right side, Holes to the left. Now they go into the shotgun. As Gene goes back in motion, comes Spittle. It's a high snap. He drops it. It's a boost in the middle. And I think Gene recovered it again. But it's going to set up a fourth down situation outside the 20. It was a high snap. And Gene had to dive back in after it. And Gene is walking off with a slight limp, a but, noticeable limp. I'll tell you what, he's had knee problems. He didn't play last week. He's got a bad knee, and uh, we'll have to keep an eye on him. So we'll set up for a field goal here. Eric Facey will be doing the kicking. The ball will be down at about the 28-yard line. Call it a 38-yarder. Remember, he's got the win to his back. Kicked a big one last week against Delaware. Here's the kick. It's up. It is no good. So the main defense digs in, and they'll take over. Nothing, nothing to score here at Fitzpatrick Stadium. The wind is blowing across the field, sort of kitty corner, from one flag on the far side. And Casey's kick pretty much goes with that ball. He's trying to hook it back, but the wind's blowing it slightly from his left to his right, and it never hooked back in. It just kind of went wide. He had plenty of leg. He kicked 42 yards last week against Delaware. Main first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Buck back to pass. Puts one out to Jimmy Fox at the 20, at the 25, at the 30, down about the 32-yard line. And I tell you, we talk a lot about Mike Bach, who's got to have a big day. No question about it for Maine. But Jimmy Fox has got to have a big day, too. He's a big 5'11", 200-pound fullback. Not only is he Maine's leading rusher, but he's Maine's third leading pass receiver. And Mike Bach will want to get the ball to Fox on those swing passes. Danny Gordon in at flanker back, replacing Jeff Knox. He's got Gordon to the right side, Serge Hebra to the left. Wood and Fox are running backs. And it goes to Big Ray Wood as he gets up to about the 35-yard line, stacked up by the right side of the New Hampshire defense. Again, I think another sign of uh, ball control on the part of Tim Murphy's crew. I think he wants to keep that ball, um, take, the, take whatever that defense will give him, try to control the ball. Remember, they're going against the wind for this uh, first half. Pick up on the play of about five yards. The ball is the 36. It'll be second down and five for the Bears. Mike Buck back to pass again. He throws out here, and it is complete. Scott Vendetto. Scott Vendetto made a great catch. About the 47-yard line, just on his fingertips, and his momentum carried him out of bounds, but it will be another main first down as the Bears come right back after stopping New Hampshire. They have the ball first and 10 at their own 47. That set is known as pro set, you know, pro right up by the main Bears, and they just isolated Vendetto. He ran a nice square out, and Buck made the throw. And did you see him keep those feet in bounds and Ooh. stretch out like that? First and 10 for the Black Bears. Pitch back comes to Fox, and he's piled up just about midfield. Scott Curtis in on that tackle for New Hampshire. He's one of their great linebackers. The pros are looking at him, too. 78 tackles for Scott Curtis, number 92, and he leads the way for the Wildcats. We're late enough in the season that these guys have played so much together, they're almost another year advanced. The freshmen are almost sophomores. I think it's a higher level of play at this time of year than we see early in the season. And we're looking at two young teams, too. Second and seven, the ball just shy of the 50-yard line. Buck back pass, rolls to his right side. Fires out here, and then a catch by Hebra. Inside the 40 and about the 37-yard line. Sergio Hebra, what can you say about him that hasn't already been said? Maine's all-time leading receiver. Guy from Nashua, New Hampshire. Here it is again, Bill. Maine throws a couple of uh, receivers out into that zone. One squaring out. Heber just isolated uh, behind the linebackers. Again, that 16 to 18 yard uh, hit that you can take. He was one on one with the cornerback who, who wanted to contain him, and Heber stood in front and took the pass. First and 10, the Black Bears at the New Hampshire 37 yard line. 9.27 remaining in the opening period. No score. In motion is Vendito. Pitch back comes to Fox, trying the right side. And he's going to get nowhere as the whole left side of the New Hampshire line, the New Hampshire defensive line, knocked him out of bounds. He'll be pick up of uh, three inches. Three inches, <laughs> if that. If that, yeah. <laughs> so it'll be 
Second down, nine yards. Let me see. Uh, nine inches, two feet. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> narrow side of the field, that sideline is your 12th defender in that situation. They had nowhere to go. They went down. We'll call it second and ten for the Bears. again. Fires out for Clark. They'll throw him out of bounds. It'll be third and ten. New Hampshire's pass defense, there's a, an expression that good pass defense starts with a good pass rush, and that's exactly what happened there. They were moving on Mike Buck. He read it. He, he was being contained, so he had to dump it off to a secondary or tertiary back, and the play just wasn't there, so he unloaded it, and New Hampshire's in a good situation now, third and ten. Heber goes to the right side. Danny Gordon to the left. Running backs of Fox and Wood. Third down and 10 at the 37. Back to pass is Buck. He's looking for Gordon, and he overthrows Gordon. Ball goes incomplete. Gordon running a down and in pattern at about the 25, but Buck overthrew him. It'll be fourth down and 10 for the Bears at the 37 with 9-10 remaining in the opening period. Not a bad drive for the main Bears there. They took the ball inside their about their 20-yard line and drove it down to the 37-yard line into a very strong wind, which will be a factor as we look at the main Bear bananas on the sideline. Now they'll kick the ball from the 37. This should be an example where they're able to kick the opponent into the hole. Dexter Stevie Bell standing back at about midfield. Again, he's punting into the wind. It's a wobbly kick, but it's going to get a good bounce inside the 10, down to about the 9-yard line. It was bad enough that it was good. <laughs> I think sometimes we use too many cliches while sportscasting. I just said Maine's trying to kick New Hampshire into the hole. What I mean by that is New Hampshire now has to go 91 yards for a touchdown. They are uh, symbolically in a hole. If they make a mistake down here, maybe a fumble, maybe an interception, Maine's an excellent position. That's what I mean when I say that they're in a hole. In the Yankee Conference right now, it's pretty hard to drive the ball 90 yards on any team in this conference. And I think there's just a little bit of a feeling out process going on here for the first few series. Uh, I think each each team is trying to say, hey, what uh, what can we do? What can we uh, can we throw against these guys short? Can we throw against them long? Maybe or can we run it up the middle? Or just just what can we do? And have they, I think New Hampshire's called a timeout here. I believe so. That uh, Gene is on the sidelines talking with uh, his offensive coordinator. Means early offensive calls have been interesting. I think that they're worried about the pass rush that New Hampshire is able to, to generate. They've called a couple of screens. They've tried to keep the dogs off them, so to speak, and they have controlled the ball reasonably well, although neither team has scored. Well, let's take a look at the main defensive lineup and Scott Nason, Mark Lewis, Troy Conquest up front. They're all big and they're all very talented, that's for sure. And they've got their work cut out for them because that New Hampshire <laughs> offensive line is big, too. And uh, there are the linebackers. I think it's a great crew. Mike Danino's had some super games lately. Joe Trefethen is just a real workhorse. Nick Penna is the leader of the, of the defensive team. John Morrison, an up-and-coming star. First and 10 to Hampshire at their own nine-yard line. 9-0-1 remaining in the opening quarter. No score of the game. Backs in the I formation, split to the left side, is Braun. End off, right straight up the middle is Dubanek gets up close to the 15-yard line. They did what they could with that. They came out of a pro set with an I formation, and they spread the main defense on the field as much as they could and just tried to uh, pick a spot where they could pick up three or four. They need to rush the ball for a field down, a uh, couple of first downs if they can. And they did well there. They picked up a long five, I'd say. We'll call it, uh, we'll call it six, second down and four at the 15-yard line. Again, the tailback is Todd Urbanek. We haven't seen Norm Ford. The pitch goes to Urbanek on the left side. He's trying to get outside, and he can. He's brought down. Outstanding job on defense by uh, Maine's free safety who came up that time. Petaway, number 26, did a great job. And what would college football be without a dog on the field? Here's a look at the replay. This looked like they had a chance to establish the corner or burn it coming over. But watch 26, Petaway, come up. And he goes after the ball. That's a great athletic move by an individual. No X's and O's can help you with that. And Bill Petaway is just a freshman. He's filling in when Jamal Williamson went down with a season-ending knee injury. Petaway just a sophomore. Did just a, nice a freshman. Job. There. Nice job. Bill. Third down and three at the 16 for New Hampshire. Long count. Gene wants to throw for Braun. It's incomplete. He had Braun cutting across at about the 27-yard line, but threw it incomplete. It'll be a fourth and three in a punting situation for the New Hampshire Wildcats. And I guess my question would be at this point is where is Norm Ford? I don't. We have not seen we him have yet, not, have we? Not yet. And he has. He was hurt last week and did not play. And if he has not played yet, 
He's had an ankle sprain, bad what ankle sprain. Mean? We were told before the game that uh, he was about 90%. Here's that play again. Gene simply let his receiver too much. Well, they had Braun isolated on Steve Luke out there, and, and he did just that. That's Nate Baldessaro back to punt for New Hampshire, standing just about the one-yard line. And he gets a kick away. It's a nice end-over-end -end boot. Not a great kick. Team. And Bain has it at the 50. Inside 45, down about the 43-yard line. That was Knox running it back. So the Black Bears, again, will get good field position as they go back to the offense. First and 10 at the New Hampshire 44-yard line. New Hampshire is not a great kicking team. And that kick was not bad because the wind was with it. It was an end-over-end -end kick, which Knox was able to catch in the air. And in that exchange of punts, Maine has come out very well. They are kind of continuing that sustained drive they began before. Dorsey in the backfield for the uh, Black Bears. First and 10 at the New Hampshire 44. And Buck drops straight back. Fires out here way over the head of Knox. And Knox got knocked down on the play by Ryan Jones. And the back judge came in and threw a flag. And you notice Mike Buck looking over to the sidelines. They run the plays in usually by their great receiving core. They've got four or five players, Knox and Vendetta and everybody, and uh, they usually bring in the plays via the receivers. Newton Whitaker, the referee, making the call. Lawrence Scantilopori throwing that flag. They said that he hit him way after the play. The pass had gone well over Knox's head, and then Ryan Jones came up to make the hit. They're calling a personal foul, 15 yards, gives the main the ball down at the New Hampshire 29-yard line. First down and 10. Vendito to the right side. Max in the eye formation in motion is Jeff Knox. Hand off to Doug Dorsey, left side. Dorsey, little running room, gets inside the 25, maybe down to the 24-yard line. Up to make the hit for New Hampshire, Basil Jaroschuk. Again, Maine running to the weak side there, and Dorsey did a good job. He, the hole was what we'll call the eight hole inside the left end. However, it wasn't there. He turned it inside and turned it into a nice one of those five-yard games that I've been talking a lot about today. It'll be second down for Maine at the 25-yard line. High formation. Again, Dorsey on the right side. Again, just a little bit of running room. He gets down close to the 21-yard line. Boulay in on the tackle. Dave Engel said this week that they're going to try to hog it up a little bit and just run it down the throat of the University of New Hampshire team. And Doug Dorsey hasn't had the big year that he had last year, but he's got the talent. If those, what well, I'll call them hogs in the main yeah. line, can, can uh, shove it down New Hampshire's throat like this, uh, it's going to be uh, mean big things for Maine today. That main offensive line, Bill, is huge. We'll, we'll talk about some of the weights and heights here of that main line. They can move a lot of people. Third and two from the 21 for the Black Bears. Buck back to pass on time. Fires and it's complete. And it's going to be down at the one-yard line, I believe, or the four-yard line. Swinson the tight end. Matt, Matt Swinson. Swinson. He's really the third string tight end for the main Black Bears as uh, Justin Strelzik is kind of moved up. He and Tony Lanza are really kind of sharing the, the starting duty. Strelzik has been a little bit uh, injured off and on. And uh, I'll tell you what, Swinson's pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if Jack Cosgrove, Maine's quarterback and receiver coach, saw something upstairs. That's the first time they've run with two tight ends today. And they hit their third tight end, who was a secondary receiver on the play, Matt Swinson. First and goal from the four-yard line. Darrell DeLuca in at fullback. Dorsey, uh, Dorsey, the deep back in the eye. He goes to Dorsey, gets down inside the four, maybe to the three. We have a flag on the play. A late flag thrown by the back judge. Her holding. Means offense holding, and that's going to back him up in a critical situation. And that'll put a few more gray hairs on Tim Murphy. <laughs> Try, we've got him. He should, too. <laughs> well, you're it's unfortunate. You're in a difficult situation when you're down there in the line. No one sees you unless somebody throws a flag at you and says you're holding. But we've talked about the defensive line of the University of New Hampshire. It is the best name we'll see this year. And you're just down in the mud, grunting and groaning with a guy, and your hands slip outside his body, and that's holding now in college football. So we're back to the 14-yard line. If anything, it gives Buck a little room if he wants to throw. It'll be first and goal from the 14 for the Black Bears. And Buck does want to throw. Rolls to his left. Fires over the middle. Quarter. Maine has 
been able to make some kind of adjustment because they're going to their tight end. Absolutely. And somewhere there's an offensive lineman smirking saying, hey, I gave you the first down that set up the touchdown, even if I did <laughs> back you up. That's right. Let's watch Mike Buck here. Play action means a fake handoff, so that freezes the linebackers, makes them think about a run, and there he is. He oh, goes up, ball Lance thrown a little open. bit behind him. Look at Lanza, wide open. The extra point is good, so the Bears are drawn first blood here. Boy, Lanza was wide open. Great 6'3", 230-pound junior from New Jersey. And uh, I'll tell you, Maine's got some, some great tight ends. We talk a lot about the receiving core uh, on the wideouts, but I'll tell you, Lanza, Strelzik, and Swinson. Wow. And we'll be back with the kickoff, uh, main kickoff, right after these messages. Some people may think of it. All right, we're back for the kickoff. Maine Black Bears getting on the scoreboard first, leading New Hampshire 7 to nothing. Back deep for New Hampshire, number 30, Dan Smith on the far side, and on the near side, freshman Tom Joy, number 47. Maine's done a really nice job, especially working into the wind, and I think although their offense has scored seven, their defense, which has stopped New Hampshire twice, once after a turnover near midfield, has played a very significant role in putting Maine up on top here. And I would think that it's got to be a great psychological boost to the Black Bears. I mean, here's a team that, let's face it, they haven't played very well in first quarters this year, and they're up on New Hampshire 7 zip. Look at the wind stop that ball. Mike Pettit's kick is taken at the 26-yard line by Tom Joy, still on his feet, but finally knocked down. He took a lot of hits, but he's down about the 34-yard line where New Hampshire will go to the offense, trailing in this ball game 7 to nothing. You could see the wind knock that ball down. It was... You know, going fine at the 30. I thought it would be taken about the 10-yard line, and it just plain stopped and dropped about the 20. So the wind is becoming more and more a factor, it appears, as this ball game progresses. And there's the scoring drive for the University of Maine. 49 yards, six plays. Lanza, that 14-yard pass from Mike Buck. And I'll tell you what, that was a great ball control drive, even with a penalty or two thrown in there. Yes. New Hampshire first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. 5-11 remaining in the opening quarter. Bob Jean back to throw. He's looking for Rolls. He slips. He's going to have pressure. Rolls out. Fires incomplete. He hit Spittle right on the numbers, but Spittle coughed it up. He will go incomplete. Second down and ten. That's Spittle's second ball. Maine came at him with an odd front that time, and I believe it was linebacker Andy Nickerson up at the top trying to put pressure on Jean. Maine did not create much of a pass rush, but Gene had a little bit nervous feet. He tried to get out of there a little bit before he had to. And I tell you, the, the field is a little bit mushy, I think, and he didn't have real good foot movement, as you mentioned there. I, I'm wondering how well he is able to scramble on that knee. Second and 10 at the 34. Banbury goes to the left side. Lone running back is Urbanic. Again, we have not seen Ford. And it's going to Urbanic, coming to the right side. He gets away from one tackle, gets down to the 40, made up to the 41. Nick Penner in to make the tackle for me, along with Joe Trefevin. So pretty good pickup for Urbanic. We marked the ball just outside the 40 and the 41-yard line, setting up a third down and a long three. We have not seen Norm Ford today as we watch the replay of that Urbanic run. Watch him break this main tackle right here. This gets a good athlete. Uh, Norm Ford is healthy. He just has not been in the ball game. And Urbanic is a junior from New Jersey. He's only gained 106 yards all year long. Third and three at the 41. Gene rolls to his left side. He's looking for Olds in the middle. It's incomplete. Olds was wide open. He just did a simple down and in pattern. He's standing in midfield, but Gene just threw in front of him. I think Bob Gene is uh, struggling here a little bit. He looks a little bit rusty. He, Bob Gene did not play last week against Rhode Island, and um, they said that he was 100%. We were told that he was 100% on that knee, but he just doesn't look comfortable out there yet. Well, a little bit of it could be the field. They've done a nice job with the field. They've planted grass all summer, et cetera, et cetera. But on the play where he had nervous feet, you made a good point, Dale. He did slip, and that got him started. That's enough to shake your confidence up a little bit. Well, New Hampshire forced to punt, fourth and four, back deep for Maine is Sterling and Hebra. And a kick is a pretty good one. Hebra will take it about the 23. He stops at 25, stutter steps, he's not going to have any running room. He's down about the 23-yard line. Let's go back to our kickoff 87 anchor desk now and Rich Kimball. Rich? All right, thanks, Bruce. Lots going on today. Let's take a look at the scoreboard. The Biddeford Tigers have jumped out on top of the South Portland Red Riots. First round of the state football playoffs. Biddeford with a 7-0 first quarter lead. Portland and Lewiston is just getting started up in. All right, thanks, Rich. We'll be going back uh, periodically throughout this broadcast to keep you updated on all the latest in the high school soccer and football playoffs around the state of Maine.
There's a timeout on the field. Maine will have the ball first and 10 at their own 23-yard line. They're leading in this ball game 7 to nothing. There's 414 remaining in the opening quarter. Good look at Mike Buck going out trying to do it again into the win. The main defense going over some adjustments on the sideline. And the Bears break out of the huddle. They'd like to sustain it for about 4-14. That's the time they've got left to go in the first period into the win. First and 10 at their own 23-yard line. Buck over the middle, hits Lanzer at the 30. He's down about the 32-yard line. Up quick to make that tackle. Well, 92, it's Scott Curtis. Continues to work again, that tight end. As you see Mike Buck again looking over to the to the sideline and uh, Gordon number 15 brings in the play here it is again Bill well they sent a blitz that time and because of the blitz he's the hot receiver when the blitz occurs they're gonna throw it to him he's got to find a place open in the middle of the linebackers and they a nice eight yard gain exactly what you want because they won't blitz you next time if you gain eight on them when they do at the 31 it'll be second down and two again Buck back to pass he's throwing deep he's got Hebron overthrows him in him the Hampshire 48-yard line. Boy, he was wide open, too, wasn't he? Buck knows Buck. Gave a signal, looked over, pointed over to Heber and said, Serge, I missed you. I know, buddy. <laughs> well, the thing was mistimed somehow. He, he seemed to get open and be looking, but be stumbling. There's a play-action fake to freeze the linebackers. And here's the throw. And it, it's just not a good throw. It's behind him a little bit. Uh, he did not have six. He would have been hit as soon as he caught it. But the, there was just a little mistiming there between Heber and, and Buck on that play. And a lot of pressure from Kevin Doherty, the uh, big left tackle. So it sets up a third and two situation. We'll go to Jimmy Fox. He tries to get the two, and he didn't make it. He tried the right side, but the, the Hampshire backers were up very quickly to make the tackle. It'll set up a fourth down situation. I'm going to say no gain on the play. Fourth and two for the Black Bears. New Hampshire did a nice job yeah. there after, you know, second and two situation. They stopped the pass uh, with a blitz from the strong side of the field and then shut down the run right there and they get it back with a chance to work with it they're going to get pretty good field position because this punts into that strong wind yeah gary jordan number 43 came up bill on that and helped on the play with o'malley and doherty there from new hampshire smith and joy a deep at the 35 yard line the punt takes a bounce back towards maine and they finally down it and it'll be down we're going to call it the 39 yard line of new hampshire where they'll go to the offense with 251 remaining and we'll be back with more Yankee Conference football, Maine and New Hampshire, right after this. All right, while we were away, uh, Urbanic picked up a yard for New Hampshire, and then Gene threw an incomplete pass to Oles. Curtis Oles, who was all alone and just dropped it. He's had a lot dropped. So it's third down and nine for New Hampshire at their own 41-yard line. And offensively, they are just not clicking, at least not yet. Bob Jean back to pass, looking for Rolls. He has Rolls at the drop again. Wow. Inside the main 45-yard line, Rolls went up and dropped it, and Rolls is down. I'm not sure he didn't get hit. He may have had the wind knocked out of him with that ball, but he just simply dropped it. Holding on to the back of his head there, it looks like we're talking about New Hampshire's one of their all-time leading catchers here, and he's dropped two in a row. Look at that. Hit him in the number. Oh, he did take a shot. Wow. I'm not convinced that that ball was thrown to the right receiver. As he curled, another man squared out beneath him and was wide open in the flat. And they're being being very, very careful with him. Here Here's it is another again. look at it. Urbanic was squaring out. Yeah, good point. Good point, Bill. That uh, may very well have meant, been meant for Urbanic. I almost think Alls was expecting the pass to be thrown to Urbanic. And... And that can, you know, cause you to miss time while you're doing a little bit. Trefeven came in and hit him with his shoulder. And I think Trefeven probably thought it was a fumble. And uh, Olds got the worst of it. He's still down on the field. The University of New Hampshire football team right now just playing out of sync. Yeah. yeah. They're not catching the ball. This isn't the University of New Hampshire that's 6-1. and one. This is a team that's getting beat as the first period has ended. Well, they're going to try to get him up here, and, uh, boy, that's a nice thing to see. You don't want to see anything happen to... You want to win the game with all your people or lose the game with all your people. And you see the numbers on Olds there, 36 receptions and um, averaging 13 and a half per catch. And uh, he holds the uh, career school record for most number of uh, yards, and so he's a very important cog 
to this uh, New Hampshire offense. I glanced at the scoreboard, and the time remaining in the first period is a minute 50. I think I'm, I'm losing it a little bit. I thought it just reset it to 15. There goes Olds off the field. A minute 50 to go in the first period. Looks like maybe he's just shaken up because he seems to be walking okay. and uh, A little groggy. Boy, if they don't have Norm Ford in there and they lose Curtis Olds, Bill Bowes, the New Hampshire coach, is going to be tearing his hair out, I'll tell you. It's going to be a fourth down and eight for New Hampshire. Again, at their 42-yard line, it'll be a punting situation. Sergio Hebra and Jeff Knox back about the 14-yard line. New Hampshire slowly improving their field position as they kick the ball with the wind here. Nate Baldessaro, a 5'690 pounder, gets a bad kick. Now, he had the wind, but it's a bad kick. And it's going to take a bounce inside. Well, it's going to roll inside the 20. He gets a pretty good roll down about the 20-yard line where University of Maine will go to the offense. First and 10 with a minute, 39 remaining in the opening quarter. And let's see if uh, Tim Murphy elects to maybe uh, try a running play or something on first down here and see if that clock can wind down and, and get the win behind him here in the second quarter. Let's see if they come out running or throwing. There's Tim Murphy, the youngest coach in Division I AA, eight days younger than one buddy Tevens. <laughs> First and ten at their own 20-yard line for the Black Bears. Dorsey, the tail back deep in the eye formation. Here comes to Dorsey on the left side. He gets a little bit of running room. Still on his feet. He gets two, maybe three yards. He's a tough guy to bring down. In on the tackle for New Hampshire, John DeBotts, number 86. And number 93, Kevin Doherty. Maine has done a decent job with the run here today. I think what they're going to have to try to do, though, is remain balanced. Absolutely. Uh, I don't think they can expect to power the ball very long against what is a great University of New Hampshire defense. Pick up a three for Dorsey and sets up a second down and seven at the 23-yard line. Swinson's back in at tight end, 88. Again, Dorsey hit in his tracks and still on his feet, but finally brought down. That's Will, Will Tyson, the linebacker. He was nailed as soon as he got the ball, but he broke away. And tried to spin to the outside, but Will Tyson coming up quick from his left linebacker spot. Knocked him down at the 18. It'll be a loss of five on the play. So Great open field 11. tackle. Great open field tackle, Bruce. Tyson, 47 tackles. Second on the team. Wrapped him around and got him. I didn't see the call, but I'm going to assume that it's a timeout for the University of New Hampshire, who wouldn't mind to see Maine kick the ball into this very strong win. They sent Teicher from his uh, left linebacking position that time. He slanted through the University line, of Maine line, and, you know, I mean, just met him about three yards deep in the backfield, and that's one of the reasons that Maine has to remain balanced, and I think that's one of the reasons early in the ball game they were throwing a couple of screen passes, etc. They've got to prevent... UNH from dominating the line of scrimmage. And right there, they did not only dominate the line of scrimmage, but the backfield. Maine's in a hole here, third down and 12, with 40 seconds remaining in the first period. They lead the ball game seven to nothing, in case you just joined us. They'll have the ball again at the 23 yard line. Third down, we're gonna call it a long 11. 40 seconds remaining in this quarter. Again, Maine into the wind right now. New Hampshire would like to take advantage of that one more time before the quarter ends. Of course, he shifts out of the I formation to the left side. And Buck, it's a great handoff to Dorsey up the middle. Dorsey is a running room. Dorsey up over the 25, up to about the 27-yard line. He's going to be shy of the first down. Here it is again. Up the middle goes Dorsey. Wide open there, makes the cut. Kind of bumps into Dave Engels, and then he's collared there by the New Hampshire defense. Well, he got the eight or nine that New Hampshire gave him that time. Exactly. They came with an even front, and they backed their linebackers up to about six yards and had an extra defensive back in the game because it was a throwing down. And Maine took the, the six or eight yards that they were given, but they have to give up the football. They have it at the 28, fourth down and about two, but they'll punt. 30 seconds remaining. New Hampshire has again called timeout to stop the clock. Very interesting, 30 seconds left to go, and they want Maine to kick into that wind, and I don't know, as I look out, it might have died down a little bit. I guess it's picked back up again now. But. That's how much a factor this wind is. It's interesting, though, that is the third timeout for the University of New Hampshire. They chose to use them now, and they won't have them should there be some anxious moments at halftime. 
In fact, they won't have them even if they're an anxious. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and Steve Bell will have to be back there and uh, doing the punting for the University of Maine. Dexter fans remember him. Um, great quarterback and uh, averaging about 35 yards a kick on punts, and uh, he'll he'll do well to get that against the stiff breeze. He's standing at about his own 15, a long count. Good snap. He gets it away. It's a spirally kick, but look at the wind. Hold it up. And it goes out of bounds. It'll be in main territory. Out of bounds. They're going to call it the 45-yard line. So New Hampshire takes advantage of the wind. They'll get good field position. 24 seconds remaining in the first quarter. And they'll have it first and 10 at the University of Maine, 45, just inside the 45. It's a good situation for UNH because they only need to make a couple of decent plays to really get a lot of momentum going quickly. Uh, get this ball game tied up with a good drive here. Curtis Olds is all right. He's back in the ball game. Split to the left side. Braun to the right side. Backs go to the I formation. The deep back to their man. Bobby G wants the throw. Out here for Spittle. He's got it and dropped it. Uh, did you see that hit by Sterling? That's a ball that you're going to drop nine out of ten times because while you've got your hands extended and your fingertips on the ball, there's a guy taking your head off. Oh, and it's Rob Sterling, too, number 17 from Maine. Watch as Gene throws this pass. Watch 17 from Maine come up and pop him. That's six foot, 200 pounds of heavy duty athletic skill by Sterling. Spittle saying, look, I know I dropped a couple of balls, but you don't have to throw it up there, do you? <laughs> Whoa. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats. And the ball, again, just inside the 45 of May. They go back to the I formation. Gene with a handoff to Urbanic. Tries to find some running room. He finds very little and gets down close to the 40-yard line. Drove Trefevin up quickly to make the tackle for May. Ball be just outside the 40. So it'll set up a third and long, and we're going to have this period run out. Three, two, one second. The first quarter ends with the score. The University of Maine, seven. The University of New Hampshire, nothing. You know, 